Welcome to the Bold Analysis, ladies and gentlemen, and thank you very much for following our podcast. Today, of course, I've been trying to look at reaction and what uh, the mood of the country, and but I want to ask you, what is the mood of people around you? Well, I'll, I'll try to do something about that. I'll try to do some exclusive podcast about that. What is the mood of people around, irrespective of where you are, whether you are in the U.S., you are, where, where are you watching us from, and the few people you talk to, even if you're abroad and talking to people home, what is the perception of the people? What is their greatest fear now that finance bill has been forced down their throat? <laughs> I don't know. What do you think? Now, Willie Mutunga, Chief Justice Emeritus, has taken a direct swipe at President William Ruto in a very uh, interesting article that has been published by the Declassified, which is a UK-based paper. And he has tried to create an interesting parallel to what is happening now. A man who really was a social justice activist in the days of President Moi is making a very important comparison here. That why is the president really boldly even going against the will of the people in the wake of this tax regime? And he's saying that the West supported Kanumoi era dictatorship on their economic, political, and military interests. He's trying to compare what's happening now. He's talking about what Moi did then, and then we make a comparison of what's happening now. That despite of the fact that there was sheer dictatorship um, during then, Moi was an outright dictator who really uh, subverted the will of the people and really mutilated human rights quite a number of things and the west did not um, um, the west did not support the resistance by the kenyans by then despite of the fact that that dictatorship was subverting our democracy and human rights in the 1980s according to the chief justice is former chief justice is west students leaders were detained without trial for assisting violation of academic freedom, leaders were really stories of assassination was a common thing. And it was the real face, the ugly face of dictatorship. And it's saying that by then, despite of the fact that they will be resistant locally, but Moy would always get his way in the West, they really supported him despite knowing very well that he was against, was doing something against the people. Now that has to be, draw that parallel to what's happening now. President William Ruto has boldly uh, uh, come out, uh, even after that lifting, we have witnessed mutilation of, of course, the voice of the people and not listening boldly. This discussion is coming because in the public participation, a good majority of Kenyans said no to housing levy. Majority of Kenyans said no to the VAT on fuel. Quite a number of issues were raised. But President William Ruto went straight and said, this is what it is going to be. The experts, and I think, not even the experts, Gadono Mushomba, while appearing in Inoro said that uh, the tax regime we are having is about servicing the IMF loans because Ruto is a dalliance to the West. And that is also said in Inoro TV that we seem to have the administration that is very, uh, is a sympathizer 
of the West, or rather is leaning towards the West. And what we can be dealing with, what can be seen, what has been explained as economic recovery template of ensuring that we fund ourselves, our government from our taxes, unlike and cutting down or rather raising these debts and paying the past debts, is just another mere understanding of servicing the foreign interests. Is it true that all the taxes, that the tax regime we have here is simply coming from what we are dealing with? And if it, if it is about the debts, what has made it difficult for our debt obligations to be restructured? Uh, being the fact that we are oblivious that we are having tough, we are in tough economic spell. And what William Tunga, William Tunga is saying is bothering this. The kind of vicious assault the bill opposers have been, um, um, opposers around Parliament building, Parliament Road, shows the raw power in dealing with the masses. And what we witnessed yesterday is a clear indication that the leaders failed to listen to the people. And to be fair enough, it's not just the majority. It is both minority and majority. A misery about how 28 opposition MPs never voted either by being duped to fly out of the country or being in the country and failing to abstain from the vote is a clear indication of the kind of high profile lifting that was around William Ruto's first budget. And I don't know who's going to listen to what William Tunga is saying. I think his point is very clear that if you compare what Mo used to do at that time, he used to do the wrongs on the people, but the West supported him, knowing very well that he was, you know, it was against the will of the people. Now that's what is happening now, and it seems it's begging the question. We all know that uh, root of power lifting was done, of course, by foreign powers. And if they gave it, if they gave President Ruto to us as our president, uh, the church here also took ownership, saying that it is the spiritual kingdom that uh, lifted the political kingdom. But why is it becoming also difficult for them to still also help out in this situation? Because Kenyan seems to have been left on their own. Kindly subscribe to our channel and I want to also want to continue thanking you for those who are pushing this brand. I want to believe that we are in the right course. Thank you for 50,000 subscribers. I still continue thanking those members of this channel, the, the back-end team that has also supported me immensely in um, uh, supporting me because I lost a foster, my foster mother, a foster mother that also helped me at my tender age. And uh, I continue thanking you guys for that. I could not really come out. I had planned not to come out and make it in the front end because, of course, we had done a couple of fundraisers for others. And it comes to you. I'm so glad that um, quite a number that learned and I reached out, you helped in a special way, Asante Nisana. Now, dalliance with the West is clearly costing us. Clearly. Costing us. That's what William Tunga is saying. And you know, um, have we lacked variety? Uh, the point is, we seem not to, because of our skewed approach on the West, we want to get a lot in terms of both development and what, uh, on our democracy. But that dalliance is also behind it because we seem to have a theme around President William Ruto, forces around President William Ruto that do not care 
about what Kenyans is going through, are going through, or what Kenyans are feeling about that one. That's why I started this podcast by asking you what people are saying out there. Now, there is something that has been um, um, bothering quite a number, and uh, I know some few have really shown reservation with it. Ruto has, um, the UD administration has been showing um, a lot of um, interest, a lot of caution in trying to please everyone because they, to secure their second term. But the boldness in making, in, in bringing in, let me use the punitive tax regime, could signal a possibility that maybe we will be seeing a looming um, erosion of democratic principles even to scoop back power again. And that is the gist of what is going on. And that is the gist of the, the William Tung article. That, despite of the fact that uh, Moi was really seen as a dictator, not a seen, was, was a sheer dictator, but he was still getting the foreign forces and getting power. There was no election that was free and fair, and he was getting power, getting the backing of the West, despite of that. So, the boldness that you're seeing and the kind of ignorance that ignoring the population could also see that it doesn't matter. We might think that William Trudeau is thinking about, oh, is he going to, are we going to send him home or no? But it could be a possibility that some West have guaranteed him that look here, whatever happens, whatever they say, your time is guaranteed. <laughs> that is the comparison with the Moy era. I am a bit shocked. And uh, I, I think it's in the fullness of time when this will come to reality. The Kenyan opposition, which I believe Azimil Omoja is, could as well have been suppressed by the forces, the foreign forces. They could as well have been suppressed. There is one silent question. Why did bipartisan talks collapse? And even after giving ultimatums, the opposition wing, rather than a team, decided to keep quiet about it. And it seems things are moving like nothing happened, like there was nothing like a bipartisan talks that was going on. Why is it it? It's a clear, it's a very big possibility that um, opposition could as well be suppressed. If you read that article, it's in, um, I think it's in Daily Nation. You will, uh, if you check Daily Nation, get that article. You realize that uh, even during the Mui era, even opposition was pocketed. And really there was a lot of handshakes by then. Even, remember the split between Jeremogi and Matiba, there was a lot of foreign influence that Jeremogi and Matiba, if they would join forces together, they were in a position to kick out, uh, if they would go to that 1992 elections together, they, had, they were in a position to kick out Moi. But because even the West by that time played a role and it kicked, it, it splitted that opposition and we got his term yet again. So that's my take. I don't know what to think. I would also uh, really want to hear your take for those who will get time to read that article. Is it true? And uh, it's, it's a very big feeling that maybe the West is dancing with Ruto. Is escorting Ruto to dance to our graves. What do you think?